managed to get a place in London, not my favourite art school, uh, called the John Cass College for two years. And then after two years there, I managed to get two years in my favourite art school, which was the London uh, School uh, of Arts and Crafts. Two years before I go in the army, then two years in the John Cass College, and two years at the, what we call the Central. So altogether, I did six years in art school, which is, for kids these days, very rare. Uh, students design, studying design or anything these days usually do three years. There's a move even to get them to do just two. A horrible idea. Anyway, I did six. I'm so grateful. What I did was to meld from being a student into being a graphic designer. I enjoyed myself enormously in art school. Apart from anything else, I met my wife, Vanda, who was a textile design student. When we left, we thought either we could become something like an art editor or we could start our own business in graphic design. I was encouraged to start my own business, but I thought, no, I want a salary job. I want to learn to make my mistakes at other people's expense, which I did. I got myself a job as art editor of a, a trade magazine called Furnishing. Very good apprenticeship. The editor was quite tough. He assumed I knew all about production in, in uh, magazine design. Well, actually, I knew nothing. So I had to pretend to know things and then ask people, printers, photographers, journalists, other graphic design friends, about things I didn't know. So I had a valuable learning experience for two years on Furnishing Magazine, and then I got my real break. I got appointed as art editor of Design Magazine, the magazine of the Council of Industrial Design. And I spent six years uh, as art editor of Design Magazine. It had great benefits. I learned a lot about design, of course. I learned a lot about graphic design. I learned a lot about magazine design. I'll show you uh, a cover from those days. Here you see a spread of covers. Of course, covers are only covers. My main concern is with the interior. But this gives you a sense of the, the makeup of the magazine. Uh, <coughs> while I was on the magazine, I acquired a few freelance clients. The first of them was called Paul and Marjorie Abbott, Abbott Toys. They were a couple, an elderly couple, who had been immensely keen on children's play. Their manager, called Edward Newmark, became a very good friend and later close colleague. He left Paul and Marjorie Abbott to join a competitive organization just setting up, which was very good for me too. The organization was called James Galton Company Limited, and he got me to be their art editor. And I was the art editor and the graphic design consultant, you could say, for James Galton Company Limited for 20 years from 1962 to 1982. I managed to rename them, somewhat against their wish, but I renamed them Gort Toys, which is a much better name, I thought. And uh, they put up with it. They had no choice. I was quite insistent uh, on the renaming, and everybody from then on, called them Gort Toys. Here, you see 
some examples of graphics for Gort toys. I was so confident about Gort toys that I even took the name and messed it up by calling it on a cover, one of the annual catalog covers, Daily Tots. So everybody thought it was great fun. Well, that was the beginning of <coughs> Ken Garland and Associates. And so I decided not to have assistants. I hated the idea of assistants, but associates. They were designers whom I would look after, of whom I was the senior, but who were designers in their own right. I didn't want to be a giant studio. I wanted there to be just three or four of us so that I could be a designer among designers. If you grow big, as some of my fellows were already growing big, you become the boss. and You spend a lot of time having lunch with potential clients. And you spend a lot of time doing things which have nothing to do with designing. I didn't want to have anything to do with that. I acquired some six, five or six, regular clients, most of whom remained with me for oh, five, ten, and in case of court, twenty years. It was this continuing relationship that mattered to me more than anything else. I was so lucky, well, we, Ken Garland and Associates, were so lucky that our clients were our friends. I cannot think how we would have got along just picking up the old client, doing the old job. It was essential that we got to know our clients, the people, not just the organisation, but the people. In the case of Gort Toys, it went beyond being a consultant designer to being a designer of some of their games. One day, the sales director, Mervyn Middleton Evans, said, what do you think of our products? I said, oh, they're OK. He said, oh, is that all? Just OK. I said, well, some are and some aren't. He said, do you think you can do better? I said, oh, yes. <laughs> he said, well, let's see what you can do. What we'll offer you is you come up with some ideas that you work for in your own time. If we like them, we'll produce them and pay you royalties. How's that? Well, it's OK for him. They could pick anything I did if they liked it. For me, I had to take a huge risk. But I did. And I produced some toys. Some of them still going, would you believe? I'm very fond of this game, and particularly fond of the work of the illustrator who produced such a lovely set of drawings to go with it. I think you can see uh, what the game is about. Now, at the same time as doing this, I was interested in teaching. And from the early 60s, about 64, I was teaching. And I've been teaching ever since. I could say it was the most continuous activity that I could uh, speak of. I was approached and asked if I had anything I could write about the practice of graphic design. Well, I was fairly young then, and I wasn't sure that I could speak, as it were, ex cathedra. But I did do a book. It's this one. It was at the invitation of a guy working for Studio Vista. And uh, here's the opening spread. It was an unexpected success. I didn't think that uh, I had it in me to do a book generalizing about graphic design. As it turned out, 
I did. <clears throat> and I had some unusual priorities. For example, I made a great fuss about the telephone as a tool for the graphic designer. Now, it's nothing to you. You use your iPhone all the time. But in those days, the early 1960s, it was exceptional to be able to use, to be able to design on the telephone. You had to ensure that your guy at the other end had something which he could correspond to what you were. So usually it was a sheet of paper with some marks on it, and you had the same thing. And so you talk from there. Uh, this book was, I have to say, uh, very successful. And it isn't in print now, but if you want a copy, it'll cost you a bomb. I'm embarrassed about what it will cost you. So there was another thing, writing. I think I ought now to cut to the chase and show you the piece of writing which I am most fond. It's this. This didn't emerge until the 80s. It was first an article in the Penrose Annual, the Graphics Annual, edited by Herbert Spencer, who had also been a teacher of mine at the Central School. This is the most complete work of mine that I know. It contains my favourite photograph, my best attempt at writing, and, and I think a very thorough piece of graphic design. I loved and still love the London Underground map. So I wrote about it with great affection. And that must have come across in the writing. So there we have it. Graphic design, uh, teaching, photography, writing. I think that's about it. I think that's enough. Would you not think so? Thank you, London Design Festival.